Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful sunny morning. Glad that all of you are here. A reminder that this service is being live streamed to our church Facebook page and is being recorded, which means it will be uploaded to our website and YouTube page as soon as possible. So remember that online worship is always an option, or if you know of other folks who might enjoy the online worship option, you can share that news with them. It's Transfiguration Day. Yay! I know everyone's excited, right? You look forward to this day every year. No, just kidding. Um, Yeah, it's not really a Hallmark holiday, but it's a Sunday that we celebrate in the church every year, which is why the Christ candle is lit, so it's appropriate that it's sunny and the sun is shining on a day like today. You'll learn more about that later. Um, But that leads us into the church season of Lent. So note the Lent worship schedule is in your bulletin. It's also in the weekly email, and you you should have gotten your quarterly newsletter mailing, so it's in there too. Remind each other, Ash Wednesday worship is this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. And then um, throughout the season of Lent, we have worship. We use Holden Evening Prayer at 6 o'clock on Wednesdays as well. So please mark your calendars. It's a beautiful service, the Holden Evening Prayer. And then um, we have Monday, Thursday worship at 6, and then Good Friday at 12, 15, and then Easter Sunday, obviously, 8 and 10. So please do mark your calendars. Let everybody know what's happening so everybody can... Be here to worship with us during the season of Lent. 
there is the spam emails announcement made it into the bulletin this week because there's spam emails going out that look like they're from me, but they're not from me. So if it looks like it's not from me, don't open it or don't click on it. I'm never going to ask for gift cards or for money or for photo links or anything like that via email. So um, just don't open it and then let me know. That would be great. And then we can kind of keep track of those things. Um, but if it looks weird, it's probably weird. So then just delete it, please. And if you've sent something to me and, you, and I didn't ever responded, please follow up because in the process of all this, some of the things have gotten kind of lost in the shuffle. So thank you to those of you who, has pointed, who have pointed things out to me already, and we will get this figured out. It's just kind of the world we live in, I guess, unfortunately. Um, please do look at Sign Up Genius for worship assistance if you're able and willing to help out with reading or ushering or communion assisting. And then um, confirmation students, note that the confirmation schedule just changed during Lent 2. I sent out an email, so hopefully everybody got that and is aware of those scheduled, scheduled differences. Please do take time to read through the announcements and the weekly email and ask questions if you have any. A reminder that you can tear off this perforated side, uh, put prayer requests on the back, confirmation students put your notes on there, and then if you're interested in learning about anything or have any questions, you can make us aware of that on too, just another um, communication tool for everyone to use. I think that's everything I have for you for the announcements. A reminder that if you're worshiping online, to pause the video whenever you need to to get your communion elements ready, your bread or your crackers, your wine or your grape juice. I invite you to take a deep breath, to center yourself in this time and in this space as we begin our worship together. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who makes all things new, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord pray. O God, in the transfiguration of your Son, you confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of Moses and Elijah, and in the voice from the bright cloud declaring Jesus, your beloved Son. You foreshadowed our adoption as your children. Make us heirs with Christ of your glory, and bring us into enjoy its fullness. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading for today is from Exodus 24. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain, and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment which I have written for their instruction. So Moses set out with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up to the mountain and the cloud covered the mountain. 
The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 2 Peter, the first chapter. For we did not follow cleverly devised myths, which when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but by men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took with him Peter, James, and his brother John, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, talking with them. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the Beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up, and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So as I mentioned earlier, today is Transfiguration Sunday, so happy Transfiguration Day. It happens every Sunday before we start the church season of Lent. And transfiguration, it's not like a word that we use too often. So just to get started, I'm going to give you the definition. It means to be changed, transformed, or where things shift, or obviously are transfigured. And even though Transfiguration Sunday happens every year, I think it's a complicated story to think about. It doesn't really make much sense, and I think it's hard to relate to. But I think to help us understand this story and what it means, I think we can understand this transfiguration better if we think about where Jesus and the disciples were when this transfiguration took place. So do you remember where they were? The first sentence. They went up onto a high mountain, right? Have any of you ever ever traveled to mountains? Anybody been to the mountains? Any sort of mountains? Yeah, right? It's beautiful. Aren't mountains beautiful, especially like Wisconsin people? So last summer, I went to Seattle, and when the plane was approaching the Seattle airport, It was like really clear outside, I had a window seat, and I was sitting on the right side of the plane to see the most beautiful display of mountains. There was the mountain range, of course, but then there were also like the big ones. So like Mount Rainier and Mount Hood, Mount Adams, Mount Baker, and so like, and everybody's leaning over trying to see because they're just everywhere, all those big mountains. And then when we were driving around that week, whenever somebody would catch a glimpse of a mountain, one of those big ones, they would yell, there's a mountain! Like it, like it was surprising. Um, but for a bunch of Wisconsin girls, 
those mountain sightings, they were pretty cool. It was beautiful. And something about seeing those mountains, those big mountains, it made everybody excited and happy, and it just transformed the mood of everyone. So whatever was going on before we saw the mountains, it changed. And it was replaced by this joy, and then we just enjoyed the beauty that was around us. So the setting, I think, is important. The transfiguration story, it takes place on a mountain. Jesus, Peter, James, and John, they went up on this high mountain, we're told. And then Jesus is transfigured. He began to change before their eyes. So his face began to change, and his clothes started glowing. And then suddenly there's Moses and Elijah. They appear. Moses, the great lawgiver of the Old Testament, and Elijah, the greatest prophet. And then Peter, all of a sudden, he's like telling Jesus he wants to build three dwelling places on the mountain. One for Jesus, one for Elijah, one for Moses. I always think that part of the story is kind of strange because Jesus is like shining and glowing in front of them, talking to Moses and Elijah. And like Peter's just like, hey, let's pitch some tents, which is kind of a funny part of the story, but it kind of gets a glimpse of this moment and what it was like for them. And then we hear this cloud comes and overshadows them and God speaks. God says, this is my child, my beloved, with him I am well pleased, listen to him. And then we're told it's over. They could no longer hear the voice of God. Jesus wasn't shining like the sun when he talked to Moses and Elijah anymore. And all of a sudden, it seems that just everything was normal again. So that's it. That's the story of the transfiguration. A transformational and life-changing event where Jesus' identity of the Son of God was revealed. So that's when we get this big glimpse. Jesus' identity as the Son of God was confirmed on that mountaintop. And transfiguration moments are often referred to as mountaintop moments. If you think you kind of know what I'm talking about, like we've all had those transfiguration type moments in our lives, I think. Moments where maybe we're not like literally glowing and shining or physically like that, but those moments when we feel like maybe we are on top of the world, right? We're shining maybe with joy or love, or hope, or life. For example, you might say that a transfiguration moment or a mountaintop moment was something like a graduation, or the birth of a baby, or finally paying off your student loans. Or maybe it was like getting that dream job, or hearing positive test results, or getting straight A's on your report card after a tough semester. For other people, like a mountaintop moment might be like trying something new that you'd never got to try before or maybe going somewhere that you never thought you'd be able to go. But the thing about those mountaintop moments is that you're changed by them. You aren't the same after they happen. For whatever reason, after you have this mountaintop moment, you're different. And so for those early disciples, the transfiguration moment they had on that mountain with Jesus, that was like the turning point of their time with Jesus. After that, they were different. In that moment on the mountain, everything changed for them. Jesus was shining like the sun, his clothes were dazzling, and the words that were spoken at his baptism were repeated. This is my child, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. And then they see that Jesus appears with Moses and Elijah. It's like the best of the best are gathered up there on the mountain together, all for the disciples to see. So this moment changes them. And then when they think that they probably get, couldn't get like any more weird or strange or maybe even more better or exciting or awesome for them, Jesus re- is revealed to them as the Messiah. That's what God says, my son, the beloved, with him I am well pleased. And in that revelation, Jesus is revealed as love's true form. And then they head down the mountain. They head the, down the mountain, and while the transfiguration story technically ends there, Even though that mountaintop experience was over for those disciples, their journey as disciples was not over. Because the road down the mountain takes them towards Jerusalem, towards the cross. For us, this story leads us to Ash Wednesday, to Lent, to Passion Sunday, to Monday Thursday, to Good Friday, and eventually to Easter. The transfiguration story that we hear today, it leads us to the ultimate transfiguration story, the story that we hear on Easter, where we see that God has changed death into life. But we aren't quite there yet, right? We aren't quite there yet. Today, we are standing with Peter, James, and John on that mountain. 
not quite sure maybe what to make of it all, maybe overcome by fear. All of this while we just wait for the season of Lent to start, the time where we prepare ourselves to celebrate the resurrection on Easter. But unlike Peter, James, and John, we know the rest of the story. We know where Jesus' transfiguration leads us. Not only did that transfiguration change Jesus, his physical appearance in glowing light, and his identity revealed as the Messiah, God's son, but because of the transfiguration, because of where it leads us, we know that Jesus changes everything. Jesus changes death to life, sickness changes to healing, despair changes to hope, brokenness changes to wholeness, and grief changes to comfort. That is the transformational power of the cross. That is what Jesus, who is revealed as the Messiah, God's own son on that mountaintop, shows us. But while we've all probably had those mountaintop moments, we know that life is not always a mountaintop moment, right? We know that we don't always feel like we're on top of the world, shining with joy and love and hope and life. But the good news for us is that even when we find ourselves maybe being like Peter, James, or John, when we find ourselves maybe knowing that we're in the presence of God, but we end up just kind of falling on the ground and not knowing what to do or being confused or uncertain and overcome by fear maybe, nothing changes those words that were spoken to Jesus, that were spoken to us in our baptisms. You are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. So in the midst of confusion and uncertainty, in the midst of the fear in our lives, in our homes, in our church, in our world, all the things going on, those are words that will never change. You are my child, my beloved. With you, I am well pleased. One thing that never changes for us is who we are and whose we are. We belong to God. We are loved children of God. So we know that the world changes around us. People change, relationships change, leaders change, living situations change, paychecks change. But we know that God's love for us never changes. And we give thanks to God for that. Amen.
whole church, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and for all who are in need. Embolden your church as its witnesses to the majesty and mercy of your Son. Move us to share our stories of your faithfulness and forgiveness. May our lives proclaim your greatness. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide and give wisdom to all in authority. Bring freedom and justice to all nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Give shelter to those lacking safe homes. Help communities to work for fair housing for all. Protect our neighbors whose dwellings do not keep out dangerous cold or heat. Accompany those who are homebound, sick, or isolated. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Make us eager to receive your word and scripture. Help us recognize Jesus' voice and the needs of our neighbor. Make us confident to follow the way of the cross. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our thanksgiving for the holy ones who have guided us in faithfulness and gathered even the unlikely as your people. Teach us to wait with courage until the promised day dawns. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. We take time in our worship service to give thanks to God for the many gifts that we have been giving. Of course, there's lots of ways to give. Obviously now there's the offering plate on your way out of worship. You can put offerings in there. There's a QR code you can scan. There's bill pay through your bank. There's a link on the website. So however you give, know that it is appreciated and we are grateful. And however you give of your time and your talents um, outside of the church too, that we give thanks to God for these many blessings and gifts that we have been able to share with others. Let us pray. Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings and all of the gifts we give in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as a people of your justice and freedom. You we magnify and adore through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
and gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the table. There is a place for you. Please be seated. If you're worshiping online, I invite you to get your bread or your crackers, your wine or grape juice ready. If you're receiving communion in the pews with your little cups, I invite you to get those out. You may peel off that top layer of the cup that goes to the wafer, or if you're worshiping online to eat your bread or your crackers. This is the body of Christ given for you. If you're with somebody who does not receive the sacrament and would like a blessing, I invite you to make the sign of the cross on their forehead or on the space in front of them and say the words, you are a loved child of God. I invite you to take off the, or peel off that next layer of the cup that goes to the grape juice, or if you're worshiping online, to drink your wine or your grape juice. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you would like to come forward to receive the sacrament, I invite you to follow the instruction of our usher.
I invite you to stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in God's grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Thanks be to God.